My name is the founder and lead designer is Zon Photo. And they say hours break because of this and that and that. But ours doesn't because it's more durable, it's made from this and this material. It could be... It sounds like you analyze everything about the listing and then uh, you, you try to put it uh, the most valuable in the image, right? Three things that, uh, that can work. One is the price, mm -hmm. one is the uh, review amount and one is images. What I mean by trust elements many sellers don't use them in the listing we have defined again about 13 trust elements you're like an image wizard you know <laughs> you know the magic how make <laughs> this sell without even uh, keywords and text in the listing just images my name is the founder and lead designer is zon photo since 2019, his agency has shown consistent results in creating outstanding listing images for hundreds of brands. Uh, and please, Vadim, tell a little bit about yourself for those who hear you for the first time. Sure. So I've been Amazon seller myself. Um, then I kind of started doing images uh, as a freelance work. Um, as, as a side job to my Amazon business. And two years ago, I decided to really scale it up. So I created the agency. I built a team around uh, what is now called Zone Photo. Yeah, and we've been, like you say, been really consistent, providing high value image service for Amazon sellers, really focusing on you know increasing sales, increasing conversions, not just making images, but really uh, nailing, nailing them down so you, you're like an image wizard, you know, <laughs> you know the magic, how make this sell without even uh, keywords and text in the listing, just images. Well, yeah, marketing uh, is nowadays very visual. I think you can achieve really good results. Like no one has time to read uh, a lot of text. Uh, everyone's time is limited. So images definitely have that magic impact like you say you can you can play around with that <laughs> that's great since since this is our second webinar usually i ask uh, my guests what has changed since the previous webinar mm -hmm. so in your case it's almost a year a uh, wonderful COVID year mm -hmm. so I, I guess right. there must be a lot of things that uh, have changed in your business maybe Tell us a short story, what you achieved and how, how your company is different uh, comparing to the same point one year ago. Mm -hmm. Well, so yeah, lots of things happened over one year, definitely. And also we see the changes in the world uh, that also reflects now on, uh, I th uh, we see clients coming to us as well with um, claiming that, you know, they are doing much, much better than before. Some sellers seen 500% increase in their sales over one year. Uh, so that on, only helped our business over this year. And um, we actually doubled our team now. So we have wow. more photographers, more designers. Uh, we beca became more consistent. Our strategy has become more defined. Um, yeah, and uh, I have, I guess, uh, also, uh, for myself, I, I drew some conclusions on what works, what doesn't work. So it just uh, added up to our existing experience. And now, yeah, it's uh, I'm, I'm open to share uh, some tips, some knowledge. Um, it's, uh, I'm also learning as I'm doing this service. So it's not like I know everything. We always constantly develop and keep learning. All the community is very grateful that you accept to share this information, this knowledge, because mm -hmm. this is a practical experience and it's almost impossible to read about it in books uh, mm -hmm. and to hear it from the person who is doing it with your own hands. That's, mm -hmm. that's amazing. Mm -hmm. So if you are ready, let's uh, start uh, our webinar. Today we will have no presentation. We will just discuss some very uh, important topics with Vadim and Vadim will share his knowledge with us. Sure. So, 
uh, the first uh, question will be like, what are the first steps uh, you take prior to creating great listing images? So where, where do you start? After, after I have invented, uh, I want to sell this and this. Mm -hmm. where, where starts the story of image? Sure. So uh, you need to look at the market first. And um, it's like coming into play playground. You, you, you develop something. Now you want to join the party like everyone else is uh, who's like selling the same or similar product. Um, you need to familiar, familiarize yourself with what's currently on the market. And you need to clearly define how your product is different to everyone else's. So what I would advise to everyone who is starting, and I guess it's part of product research stage. It's already when you're choosing your product, you're doing half of that job already. So you're looking at the competitors, are you comparing um, maybe quantity, like if there's like something, uh, for example, screws or nails, uh, you, like some sell pack of 50, some pack of 30. So you can compare the quantities, the price, if it's not about the quantity in general, what's the material, what's the thickness, uh, the products, um, like the towels, for example, or fabrics, they have this uh, GCM uh, thickness of the fabric that uh, usually new sellers come in, they make it thicker, better. Mm -hmm. or, um, yeah, different specifications that you can look at. Um, and what I would really focus on when looking at the market is, is those sellers who claim they are better than anyone else. And you need to be aware why they are better, why they're saying they are better. Because imagine when someone is shopping online, so what they will do, they will go on page one, they will click on your listing and they will op it, open it in separate tabs. So they will be your listing, your competitor one, your competitor three, and they will be just scrolling through these tabs and, and just, one by one, they will be closing them down. So you need to be aware, okay, if, if they open this competitor and in their images, they say, hey, my product is much better because you have this, 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 um, and yours just describes the product. Like you're not really selling it. Maybe you're just showing it. Okay, you can drink from it. You can do this with this. It solves this kind of problem, but it's not, it's not a unique selling point. It's something that every one of these competitors has. What we are looking for is really that information that stands out, uh, that you really need to include also in your listing. So that's the first thing I would do. I would compare uh, what everyone else is having and then define what you are having. But you mean, you mean the features of the product or the, uh, but, or is something connected with the photos of your competitor? Mm -hmm. So when we're looking at the market, um, we both looking at the bullet points information. That's one point, but specifically we focus on images. And um, in images, for example, they could have a separate image that only highlights that they have five year warranty. Mm -hmm. That could be one of the images. So, and they're clearly saying, this is uh, like, don't buy anyone else's because we are the real deal because we have this warranty, no one else has it. Mm -hmm. Or it could be, like you say, some kind of feature where they, it could be an image where it says our products, others products. And they say ours break because of this and that and that, but ours doesn't because it's more durable. It's made from this and this material. It could be, so this is warranty image. Then this one, ours, others image. It could be competitor chart where they're showing, uh, okay, like competitor one, competitor two, and they just have crosses and tick boxes, check marks. So, and a list of features. And then you can see, okay, competitor one has this, 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 and we tick all the boxes. We are the best. <laughs> so anything, any information like that is very, very valuable. Um, and usually when sellers come into, into the markets, everyone would somehow differentiate themselves. They would either add bonus items. That's another thing also to look out for. Um, 
or they somehow improve it. So you need to be aware what others have done to improve it and where your improvements compare to the market. Does it make sense? Sounds like you analyze everything about the listing and then uh, you, you will try to put it uh, the most valuable in the image, right? Because when, when you first hear about great images, like not professional, the first thing is uh, to buy the most expensive photographer and to buy the most expensive designer. And here you are, you get the very beautiful, the most beautiful images on Amazon. But yours, what you're saying now is that everything starts from the features and how to put in the images, the, the bullet points from the listing, right? Do I understand correct? Yes, correct. So basically you're right, you're correct. Um, if you hire product photographers, uh, they specialize in photography. They're really good at doing that. They're really great photographers. And usually if they go to photography school, so what they will be taught there, if they do specifically product photography, they will be doing um, alcohol bottles, uh, expensive watches, mm -hmm. um, and uh, perfumes, different um, so, like um, creams and, and things like that. And because those categories, uh, you can really be creative in there. And also it requires a lot of editing, like bottles needs a lot of editing on the highlights or the watch jewelry needs, uh, everything needs to be shiny, polished. That's mm -hmm. why they give those assignments to them. And then they finish school and they come into real world where it's not just jewelry, it's not just uh, bottles, <laughs> but it, it's like everyday items that uh, anyone sells. And uh, apart from product photography, they also need to be very good in lifestyle images. Mm -hmm. They have to capture someone using it or uh, a process or uh, a feeling that this uh, product can give. Um, so it's not just uh, a product photography. And also on top of that, like you say, there is a marketing part that photographer is not thinking about. Uh, they've been taught to, you know, deliver high value, really high resolution images, but uh, they're not really thinking what would a text, a simple line would make or add to the picture. Um, and this is where we come in, I guess, where we have combi combined all these, um, uh, all these aspects of great listing image into one, where we have one great photographer, we have great designer, and we also have great marketing team that really analyzes all the markets and it adds those images that we just discussed mm -hmm. to your mix of listing. Uh, it sounds like very similar as I heard from Jana. Jana, I, I think you know her, she has a company about translations. Mm -hmm. and she said the sentence that I have remembered that a professional translator will uh, who, who was learning and studying to, to translate in knows language very good uh, will translate it beautiful according to the literature and the language rules mm -hmm. but this doesn't work on amazon because translation on amazon must help to sell goods mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the the, 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 the same you say now is like professional photographer who was learning to take photos, he'll make a beautiful photos, mm -hmm. but they will not sell because on Amazon, you have to have a special profession photos that are selling the goods. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Correct. Yes. Uh, I think 10 years ago, maybe when Amazon wasn't that saturated, uh, I think great photography really help to stand out and some sellers really focused at those so at some point uh, all what you needed was really great photography and few lifestyle images and that's it mm -hmm. uh, but then during the years uh, more different types of images came up like competitor charts brand images warranty images uh, we, we have actually defined about 60 uh, image types on amazon that any mm -hmm. listing can have and uh, 
we need to be aware what kind of image types there are. Downloaded, 60 downloaded, 60 types of images. No, is it is your secret? <laughs> yes, it's one of our inside secrets. Uh, yes, we have defined those 60 images. And like I said, um, you know, I mentioned some of the images already in the beginning of this webinar. But again, you need to be aware of your competition. If everyone else in your market is using the same type of images, you come in and now you say, I'm better because of this and this, or, um, you know, you, you draw another competitor chart and everyone else in your niche has competitor charts. So you're not gonna stand out. So these image types, they really help us um, to pick something that's gonna stand out from others. So mm -hmm. we always go opposite to the market. We can't say that if you have these image types, um, you're gonna succeed on Amazon. This is not how it works. The way it works that you first look at the market, you mm -hmm. define, okay, there are these type of images, but we're gonna do something different. We're gonna twist it around. We're gonna add something more on top. And that's how you stand out. Uh, that's one of the ways. I mean, we do a lot of things, but this is when we build a strategy Yes, this is um, um, cool. one of those tips, yeah. So let's go further. How do you evaluate competitor images and why is it so important? Um, so we just opened page one <laughs> and uh, I know that uh, most uh, sellers, what they do, they open best sellers and uh, they open those who have these best seller badges. And they think, oh, this guy is selling so well, his images, they must be working because he's getting a lot of sales. Mm -hmm. But most often than not, uh, it's due to high review amounts. And we, we see it very often that there are sellers with 3000 reviews, 2000 reviews, mm -hmm. and some uh, sellers, they also come to the services and they, they show this competitor and they say, hey, this guy is selling a lot. I want to have similar images like he has, but but different. I want it to be like my my <laughs> brand, my style, but uh, but similar like this guy. And I think this is a very big mistake because first of all, you're becoming a copycat, mm -hmm. and second, um, it it doesn't mean that the seller is selling because of the good reviews, uh, good images. It's probably because of good reviews and probably decent price. So um, what we look at when we go on page one, we're trying to find those sellers with little amount of reviews, but who are selling well. And that is showing that despite the low social proof on Amazon, mm -hmm. something else is working there. And there are only th three things that, uh, that can work. One is the price, mm -hmm. one is a uh, review amount, and one is images. So these three things are very important. So if we take reviews down because he has li little reviews, it's either price or images. So if his price is, uh, is not low, it's reasonable price, then probably he has good images. And that's how, and th those competitors we are looking at. We are looking at page one with low reviews who are selling a lot and who have decent price. But not the lowest price. Uh, not the lowest price. I mean, they're still part of the market. You still need to look at them. You need to evaluate because you will compete with them. Your price will be higher than than them. And you need to, of course, also compare if you can, how you can beat, beat them. Perhaps if they're selling cheaper products, um, you can offer, uh, you, can, you can highlight in your listing that you are a brand, you can create more, I guess, add value to the product uh, in different ways. You can um, create instructions, better instructions, manuals, bonus items. You can uh, improve your features. Um, you can add warranty. Um, what else was there? I had the list of all the things you could do actually. I, um, I don't remember them from head, but there are about 11 ways you can, um, you can differentiate yourself. 
Okay, you. I, I hope you someday you will uh, open your cards and show your uh, secrets to the public because it's very interesting. Uh, so let's let's go together uh, forward. If you were to pick one thing, what is the most important when it comes to great listing images? One thing. Yeah, only one thing. I think it's uh, being very clear with your unique selling points and uh, be clear in a way that you show them very clearly and you that they almost scream when you open your, <laughs> that listing that they are so noticeable that uh, you can't i'm not like you can't go through your listing and not notice why you are better for example for example let's give an example let's take this mask for example <laughs> okay i am selling this mask okay now there are probably i don't know 50 sellers who sell this uh and you could say that you have improved something i don't know what and you can say that inside this coating mm -hmm. you have anti-sweat technology <laughs> so or there's some some special I, I don't know something to do with ventilation that maybe these holes are larger or something now now we know what the main, my main problem when you put it on yes because this is the main problem of this mask it's a great mask but that's why i only wear it for like one minute and then i take it off okay. you sweat a lot in this one <laughs> or i you know what i even was doing i was when i was using this for busking i had a little fan built in inside here wow it was working from battery and it was just blowing wind into my face. <laughs> so okay. for example, you have a mask like that and it has this feature. So, okay, you know, you have improved products. You have done something to stand out. Now you need to market it. You, it on your second and third image, you need to highlight these features because second and third image in your listing images Mm -hmm. everyone who now listens they need to look at their second and third image those images get noticed the most like everyone who comes to your listing images they will look at your main image second third and if they nice enough like they grab attention they look interesting they would scroll further down so whatever you put in second and third is really really important and that's where we put this information there but that's where we need to highlight this. Hey, this is a special mask with this anti anti sweat technology, or yeah, any any other features. So, in short, what is the most important thing with the images? Like, try to be very short. Very short. Um, Yeah, you, you, unique selling points. I think that's that's it. Yeah. Unique selling points on slide two and three. Yes. Right. Okay. Yes. And, and uh, what if uh, I don't have any unique selling points? <laughs> yes. Very good question. This one. <laughs> you might come in and you say, "Hey, I haven't. It's just a mask." It doesn't have any anti-sweat technology. It doesn't exist. No one has created mask like that yet. I just sell what's available in China. Okay, that's fine. Now there are other points that you can add. Um, there is thing about trust. So mm -hmm. if you get uh, people to trust you, they mm -hmm. will buy from you. So if you gain trust, you will get gain sales. Mm -hmm. So how do you make someone trust you? Um, first of all, you can introduce yourself as a brand. It's like talking to people, you meet someone. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I say my name is Vadim, it's like in marketing, it would be, okay, my, my brand is called, I don't know, unicorn, <laughs> unicorn masks, whatever. This is my name. And then you start uh, looking at um, how I look, uh, what, I, what I'm dressed like, so things like that. And in marketing, that's the same way. 
So you start looking at, at the presentation. So design elements and, um, and information in general, how you talk, how you, what are, what texts you are. So how I'm speaking is the same, like how, uh, how in marketing, what kind of texts appear in your listing images. And the third thing is uh, those trust elements. So what I mean by trust elements, uh, many sellers don't use them in the listing. We have defined again about 13 trust elements that you can use. This could be, for example, uh, different badges. It could be a signature. Mm -hmm. Signature is like, you know, you're signing a document and everyone is used that if it's signed, there it's trustworthy <laughs> mm -hmm. um, also paragraphs uh, look at news tabloids you open the newspaper there is a title which screams at you okay this is the fact mm -hmm. and then underneath is a huge paragraph so right. without reading it you just read the title and then you see this huge paragraph and you assume that this title is backed up by this information. Mm -hmm. you, it looks like a fact and it builds trust. The same is in uh, listing images. If you're using titles, you also need to have small texts underneath somewhere because mm -hmm. that would uh, create the feeling that what says in the title is also backed up by some, by some kind of fact. That, uh, that people don't read. Yeah, yes, yeah. people people who have time, they would read it, <laughs> but uh, they, need, they need to be there. Okay. Um, what else? Flags, if yours is, uh, is made in US or some kind of location, it could be a map, it could be a state designed in, in Seattle, mm -hmm. for example. Okay. It could be a um, badge like genuine leather you can create a badge like a stamp. Stamps is also a trust element. Um, five stars from Amazon. That's also a, an, another thing. Um, many sellers are afraid, I guess, of using them. Uh, but in listing images, uh, we believe it's very safe to use them. Don't use them on main image, but in listing images, for example, you have uh, you have a feature. You say. Uh, this, uh, for example, phone is waterproof, right? Mm -hmm. And then you add five stars under the title. So that kind of backs up the fact again. It adds this trust element. You feel like this fact, what you're reading, mm -hmm. has, has been uh, backed up by reviews. Mm -hmm. And these little things like that... Um, and the logo, if you have a logo, a very good logo, that also could create a trust. So throughout the listing, you just add those little tweaks, little trust uh, there and there. And um, you have this competitor chart, maybe. Um, could be brand image where you talk about your brand, introduce yourself, give warranty again. Uh, so yeah, things like that. And that by, by the end of the listing, when you get to the end, you've gone through all the trust elements, all the information, and it feels like, okay, I know, I know this brand. Mm -hmm. I feel like I know what they are doing. Uh, seems like they are backed up. There are different, maybe certificates listed. You could have certified, got cert certified, or maybe like any other certifications if you have, or patents also, that's also very important. If you have any, so all those trust elements, you need to add them there, and yeah, and that would convince someone. A small kid playing with this mask and saying that wow, it's so wonderful, I like it. <laughs> yes, yeah. So even uh, if you're like you, I guess question was if you don't have unique selling points. Yeah. Uh, so first, yes, is a is this trust thing? Uh, you you could look legit, like you could. <laughs> You look like a brand, like uh, even you don't have many reviews, it, you could, you still look professional, right? Mm -hmm. That could already create that trust. And then, and then uh, you, you still can diminish competitors. If you're not better, if your mask is not better, you can, com you can compare it to very 
other type of products. For example, not exactly this type of mask, but compare it with some paper mask and mm -hmm. say, hey, your paper mask will get dirty. It will, um, I don't know, not hold on your face. Uh, your this uh, bungee or whatever that's called yeah. wrapping around your head is gonna is tearing apart. But with this mask, you don't have to worry about anything. It's designed to fit. Uh, it's easy to clean everything like that. So this is another way you can um, create illusion that your product is better if you compare it with different type of product. Not exactly the same masks, but different type. Cool, thank you. Here we, we have heard a lot of secrets actually. Thank you for sharing them. Uh, so, do you have a strict preference on how many future images, lifestyle images, and uh, one listing should have to be successful? Are there any specific images that every listing should have? Like, it doesn't matter what you're selling. This is uh, one, two, three, four, five scheme of selling on Amazon. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to features and thinking of how many feature images you should have, um, one rule I would say, never, never add more than three features in one image. And better if you really want to highlight those features, have one feature per image and really show it visually, like with text, all the text, everything that's in that one listing image would focus on that feature. It would really highlight that one aspect. If you're trying to add two features into one image, that's still possible. We, we do it when we don't have space. So when there is a lot of um, features, but you don't have space, you can break image into, into half, uh, make one half about one feature, other half about other feature. If you so one what sellers do also what I noticed in the market, uh, they would have lifestyle images, lots of lifestyle images, mm -hmm. maybe maybe few simple feature images, maybe something not maybe even without text, just on white background. And then they would have this one image that is just full of all the features and benefits. <laughs> So they will take all the text, all everything they know about this product and they will just put in one image. And then you overcomplicate. You just don't, like you just scrolling through listing, there's nothing there. And then suddenly this one image where there's all the features there. So if you have more than three features in one image, so what happens? First of all, no one gonna read all that information. Second, if they will read, all the information, nothing will stand out to them. It they will be just like, like a description, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so just, just focus on one feature per image. If you don't have enough space, uh, use two features per image. And uh, speaking of those other types that you mentioned, what kind of other types of um, images you should have. Actually, I have, uh, like, like I said, we have this blueprint of about, well, 55 image types, but we're still adding new, new ones. And I'm currently, actually, I have put it together in an ebook, and I have it available if anyone wants to buy. <laughs> I have a special discount right now. Yes. So I can share this link. <laughs> Yeah, I was not going to like uh, market this one here, but if anyone like really interested, uh, there's a, if it's you go on. Not about, it's not about pushing your and selling your products in, uh, in the webinar. It's about sharing the knowledge and information. So uh, just uh, text it in the comments at our live studio and I'm sure everybody will say thank you or send it to me. Okay, sure, yeah. So anyways, in that book, uh, what we do as an agency, we basically use this book on daily basis. And we have defined uh, the, like there are 55 image types and the image types from one to 27, uh, 
we have a rule that you need to include at least two of those images in the first six in your listing. So mm -hmm. we just use a simple rule like that. Um, I can't tell you specific types that you need to use for each listing because it's different. So when you look at the mm -hmm. market, when you evaluate, you will find in those 27 options, at least two images that, uh, that you could have, definitely. Most likely there will be more. It's just uh, you, you're gonna get to the point where you have too many options. <laughs> you probably mm -hmm. can make about 20, 25 images per listing that could work for your product. It's just about choosing which ones would really work, which ones would really differentiate you uh, from, from the others. Yeah. I think the end result, it will be the question of testing. Yes, yeah. Every, every product is different, every market is different. And probably even if you, if you would do another product in the same niche, we would do it differently. Because then now we know that, okay, there is this hour listing there. So we need to now beat that listing. <laughs> okay, wonderful. So let's continue and discuss a little bit uh, different topic. So how important is to have branding nowadays? Not mm -hmm. just wonderful images, uh, from the list of 55 that we can find in your ebook. But what about branding? Mm -hmm. Yeah, two years ago, I think uh, I was in Prague and there was Kevin King's um, speech there. Like he was doing a talk. And already there, uh, I've seen lots of talks about and mentions of branding and how important it is. And I remember Kevin King then said that, uh, you know, Chinese sellers become stronger and stronger. Uh, and one of the things that can really differentiate us uh, and I guess give us opportunity over others is branding. Uh, so he mentioned that uh, they are very good at manufacturing, uh, creating products, but they're not as good with branding. And they don't maybe understand that much uh, of how it works in Western world, because we like things that are presented really well, packed well. Uh, we use copywriters. Uh, we put a lot of effort into marketing, where for them is more like factual. Okay, this is what you get. Uh, these are the features. These are better features. So it's it's a bit different. And I think looking in the bigger picture. Uh, that's where branding can really differentiate us and also save down the line against like uh, new products coming in and, um, and just uh, competing on features because you will still still stand out you will have a brand so what brand gives you is identity you know just um, uh, for example this cup <laughs> yeah. uh, like this is a good uh, actually they do a lot of branding. This is a Moomin cup. Uh, mm -hmm. Moomin is, is, um, is this cartoon uh, that's very popular in Finland. Yeah. yeah, they do lots of merchandise. Uh, this is one of them, like it's one of the characters from that cartoon. So it's just uh, people start associating themselves with the brand. Like I mentioned before, when they learn about your logo, it's like you meet a person and you you know, okay, that person is called Max. You know, mm -hmm. okay, this, this guy is Max. But what do I know about Max? And then you start engaging with him. You see how he talks, how he walks, how he presents himself. And you start to get a bit more, I guess, understanding who Max is. Mm -hmm. And then when you will need something, I guess what Max does or he's good at, the first thing you will think, oh yeah, there's this Max, this guy. Uh, actually, yeah, I might ask him if he can help. And the same it works with brands. So people learn about your logo, then they learn about who you are, what you do. Um, and then when they will need something, they will think about you. They will just, it will come into their mind. Okay, this guy may be, I, I trust him. I will, maybe they already bought the, bought the product. Also, they you could establish connection also with your existing customers. Uh, yeah, it could um, really um, 
build trust. It's a trust element. Having a brand is building trust, basically. If I understand correct, it can help you to uh, make stronger your presence in a niche, not just one Amazon listing, not two, um, not two of them, but in the niche. When, uh, when you already can have uh, a number of uh, different products, a list of them, and all of them are under the branding. And when some person will think of the niche, then he will remember your first name there, right? Yes, correct. Yeah. And one of the things I want to add, like it's just we're talking abstract now, but uh, mm -hmm. when we look at the listings where branding actually works, like practically, practically and that's that's important is uh, when you look at your listing images uh, when I analyze brand branding for our clients mm -hmm. so one of the th things is we look at lot uh, like brand presence in the listings so that would be one thing is logo logo presence okay, so on some images you need to have logos some sellers do it on every single image they put their logo but uh, I think it's overdoing it. You just need to pick the photos where the logo would fit, where would it add this trust element, where it's needed basically. So that's one, add logo there. And again, logo has to be good. <laughs> if it's not uh, well done, if it's uh, like I had one seller who came in, he wanted my our help, but he had really bad logo not going to mention his brand name but it was completely different like he he had very corporate logo but he wanted to appeal to eco-friendly vegan community mm -hmm. and you can't like come with a logo that's very corporate into that world it has to be something that resonates with the nature with that so you need to have a logo that adds this trust that this is that resonates with your target audience and then it can really be powerful on those images. And second thing is fonts. So your text styles, um, don't use just a regular Times New Roman or yeah. Arial. I'm I, yes, go on Google, Google fonts. <laughs> you can type any text there and you, you can see that the Google fonts are free to use. So just go in there. There are really good selection of modern fonts. If you lack some um, uh, creativity, you can also go on Canva. On canva.com, uh, you can get these uh, mixtures of fonts. You can get some creative ideas because sometimes it's not just about one font, it's combination of two fonts, three fonts. We would combine usually two, yeah, like two to three fonts. We would have one font for titles and, and one font for, uh, for texts like paragraphs small uh, small text different um, so that's how you can already differentiate yourself okay you have a logo then you have texts that resonate again with your logo they look good together as a combination and then third thing is also that sellers uh, not paying attention to is um, is uh, design elements, shapes, uh, different icons, um, could be just backgrounds. So first of all, colors, what kind of colors you're using? Yeah, and what, what kind of elements in general? And this also can differentiate your brand. For example, for one client we've done this, um, he, he wanted really minimalistic design, like, mm -hmm almost like Apple, but how you can create something like Apple and still be different. So we still took this uh, very interesting approach from Apple that's very clean on white background most, most of the time. Um, again, we picked uh, very good fonts for the client that really look minimalistic, not the same like Apple, but uh, sort of looking like that. And to differentiate him even further, we created these design elements, which were just very thin circular lines. So you barely can notice them, um, but we were just shaping different things. Um, uh, for example, highlighting handle, yeah? Imagine handle and you highlight these very thin lines around it. Mm -hmm. Or um, 
we were saying, okay, there's a perfect fit. So there was a line where it fits perfectly. Um, you see how it aligns. And we again, use those circles to highlight that. So it's just things like that. They become part of your branding. Mm -hmm. And you, if you look at any website, anything like, just look for inspiration, really. Um, if you're selling a dog product, uh, go, go out there, have a look what actually big brands do, what kind, what their websites look, look like, what kind of design elements they're using. Mm -hmm. um, and you will notice that every, every single one will have some kind of uh, interesting graphic elements. And those also become part of your brand. That's how, that's, it's not just logo, but someone can notice this uh, one design element and they will think of your brand. Uh, and that's something no one else, I guess, can copy really. This will be, become your unique style. Um, so it's, uh, again, logo use, your texts and design elements. So these three things, and they have to be aligned. They have to work together very well. So mm -hmm. some sellers, what they do, they, okay, you can create um, logo, you can create texts, and then you go on Adobe Stock and you download this 100% uh, satisfaction guarantee badge and you just stick it there in your listing. And it's gonna be completely different style than what your first things are. It's, it's just, it's gonna look cheap. So everything has to be similar style. Like mm -hmm. it has to work together. You can't take um, just a random icon, ra random, like stock badge or anything and just uh, put it on your listing and think, okay, that's, that's enough. I've had the trust element. What creates trust is that it's complete. It's like one, everything is connected. Uh, yeah. I hope this helps. <laughs> you have a lot of information. Thank you. So how do you approach actual photography shooting? So what, when, when starts the shooting? <laughs> Sure. Okay. So you've done your planning, for example, you've, you've um, looked at competitors, mm -hmm. then you defined, okay, image types, or these are present in there. We're going to use this. You, you have this feature so we can have this image, blah, blah, blah. So you have the strategy and think, okay, next is photography. Uh, so photography wise, you need to, I guess the most important thing about photography is getting the right angles of your product. So the feeling that you want to achieve uh, with photography is by that by the end of the listing, whoever is looking at it, they go through all your images and they feel like they know they've seen every part of your product or the most important parts. They know how to use it. They know how, uh, they maybe even feel like they've touched it <laughs> mm -hmm. and maybe they even uh, associate some emotions with it. Yeah. So that's, that's the job of photography. Um, so for example, what we do, we create different angles, different set of angles. I can mention some of them uh, that I think every listing should have um, maybe I can show with this clock, maybe like that. So yeah, it's a nice clock. Mm -hmm. uh, so what kind of angles you can do? Uh, that's with any product, by the way. Like uh, one thing definitely that you need to have is 3D image. We call it 3D, why? Because you, you can see three sides. Um, wait, I will take something that's easier to grasp like this battery here. So when I talk 3D, it means that you see three sides. So one, two, and three. You yeah. see the front, the top, and side. So this uh, this creates the three-dimensional feel. Uh, mm -hmm. So it, it allows us to feel the dimensions of it. Uh, we can feel the weight by looking at it. Um, mm -hmm. And then there are flat lays, which is just like this. I'm mm -hmm. just showing you, you only see one side, nothing else. Yeah. And that's cool. Like if you want to show what's included in the package, it's very common to just lay it all out on table and just shoot it from top. 
So this is called flat lay. Um, side shots. Mm -hmm. um, this is also, I mean, and then you need to look at uh, that's so two angles that's what you do and then third angle is um, when you start looking closer to the details so okay you notice there's something interesting about this one uh, there's a light it lights up okay now you need to highlight this so we need to take close-ups and uh, every listing should have all these angles 3d flat lay and then you have close-ups so you're showing it up close, very close. And the closer you get, the more interesting it starts to look. It looks like high quality. Uh, you almost feel mm -hmm. like, oh my God, this is uh, such a durable, I don't know, rigid texture. It's just, it's like in movies, like when they so, show something in slow motion, it always looks so cool. So in photography, it's close-ups. When you show something very up close, you can almost feel the texture, everything. You, you see every small detail. And then we notice, okay, here is something interesting. So we also photograph that. Uh, we have photographed this. Okay, what's this for? We think about functions. Okay, this is to charge. So it, uh, it goes into the charger. So we need an image where it connects. <laughs> and we start thinking of processes. Okay, what's this for? This is uh, so you can, uh, you, press on it and then it goes into Mavic Pro basically it's it's battery for the drone and uh, then we start doing hand shots where a human is interacting with this and it brings product to life so that's the fourth angle is hand shots so one was 3d flat lays close-ups and now we get to hand shots hand shots are very cool I can um, for example, I go out from the screen and I do like this. Oh, so this is great battery. I'm showing it to you. It could be like that as well. It could be like that. Could be like that. You know, I could be could be like that. Like yeah. It, um, so hands are gestures. But so it really, can, really brings trust in the picture. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, uh, you can think of many things how you can show. Also, what hand shots are really good at, like uh, sellers like these dimensions pictures where they have it on white background, very boring picture. I would never recommend it to anyone. They have these boring pictures where just, you know, lines drawn and it shows how big they are and they give no sense to whatsoever how big it is. If you show it in hand and then you add dimensions or somehow highlight it, it's much, much better. You have this human presence. It really allows you to, to know how big this uh, object is. It depends on how big is your hand. As well, <laughs> and how big is your product. <laughs> if it's big product, then you need to use human presence. It's not enough with a hand. You need to show human next to it. Okay. Um, so yeah, hand shots. What? And then lifestyle pictures is the fifth. And then um, lifestyle pictures, we do the same. Uh, it could be in lifestyle. So instead of having hand shot on a white background, we have a hand shot on some themed nice background. Um, With um, <laughs> for example, we had a product, uh, we had, um, uh, we were shooting nail scissors. Uh -huh. So what we've done for staging, we have, uh, we went to the shop and we bought this, um, how you call it, um, mar marmors, how is marmors? Marmors? Yeah. Mar marmors. It's a stone, it's a stone. Ah, marvel, marvel, yeah. Marvel, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, like, uh, yeah, backgrounds. So why we chose that background? Because it goes well with the nail. It almost looks like a nail. Mm -hmm. It looks clean. Also, it's uh, it creates this feeling of spa. And um, yeah, it's just white, beautiful, and, uh, and polished and clean. Um, so it resonates with what we want to say. And sometimes uh, having like hand shots on some background also 
you know, in lifestyle would add uh, more feeling than just having it on white background. And mm. same things like 3D shots, having it in a setting somewhere also could look nice. Um, cool. And the uh, humans, human presence, humans using it. One of the things that also I remember from that Kevin King's presentation, he said that they use smiling people in every listing and that uh, that's been proven. He said that uh, in marketing that smiles, they create positive emotions and they, I don't know, they, they work. So we try to use smiles as well, really. So when I do shoots, uh, sometimes we also shoot kids always joke around i have set of jokes <laughs> that i just say and then people start laughing and you see these uh, emotions and sometimes i just say hey can you spin around and then and then just freeze and they just <laughs> do that or they just in action and they freeze and then you get this genuine uh, emotion or feeling captured in that picture i think that also is is very important in doing I'll remember this for the family shootings. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Prepare jokes and they have to be funny jokes. Wow. Some kids they don't like the the jokes of their parents. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, the time is running very fast. Actually, we are run out of time. Uh, maybe you have something very important that you wanted to say and didn't have time for it. Okay, uh, something important. So, I mean, yeah, I could, I mean, for everyone who wants to um, just message me or, I don't know, just ask questions, anything, you can always either um, email us at yourzonephoto at gmail.com or you can find me on Facebook. I guess uh, Alexander will share those links. Of course. And, um, yeah, I mean, I could offer you, <laughs> I could give you a special offer for those who are interested in, in that. What will get our viewers uh, when they say WAPI promo code? <laughs> okay, there will be WAPI promo code, okay. Uh, yes, with that, uh, so it's gonna be a special link that uh, only the viewers of this uh, webinar will get and it will give you $100 discount on this complete br blueprint of 55 image types. So mm -hmm. this book will be really valuable for those who really want to, I guess, add and think about strategies, what kind of images you could have. It would give you the tool, I guess, on how you can build your listing, what kind of images you could actually have. It's a very practical book. We always use it in-, in I, want, I want to have it with your signature. Is it possible? <laughs> Oh, uh, you, you also get a 30 minute consultation with me if you buy that book. So that's another bonus. So. Everybody, everybody, uh, just write it down, find the contacts. We we'll, we'll post everything usually under the video and the contact with Vadim. Vadim will help you to make the best photos and the best, not just beautiful, but the best selling images for your Amazon listings. Thank you, Vadim, very much that you are with us today. Uh, it was another wonderful webinar with uh, uh, practical showing how to take photos with your products. I loved it very much. Uh, and again, Vapi company helps you with peak pack and ship services all over the Europe. We've got warehouses in 14 thousand countries and we fulfill orders in 24 other countries of Europe. Delivery speed, 24, 48 hours. We're integrated with the mar marketplaces, with the local marketplaces, with Amazon. And please guys, any questions about uh, fulfillment and logistics, it is company WAPI. We will be glad to help you. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you, Vadim and everybody, good luck. Thank you, Alexander. I guess we meet next year again. <laughs> we should oh, do it annual oh. now. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, yeah. everyone. Thank you.